Hello and welcome to this tutorial which will show you how to design and make your own personalised crib board. The software that will be used to do this will be Delcom's Artcom Express 2013. Using this software you can make virtually any design and create the toolpath for the CNC milling machine to produce your design. Here I've opened the most basic form of Artcom which is Artcom Express with no further modules installed. First thing I'm going to do is open up a new model. Here is where we can set up our job dimensions. So for my crib board I want a piece of raw material with the following dimensions. This creates our new model in a 2D view. Firstly I'm going to open up the relief clip art library which is included with the software. In this folder there are many ready-made relief designs. This includes a range of bases of which I'm going to use this simple oval base. Double clicking this has imported it into my model and now I'm just going to change the dimensions. If I click on this padlock I can change the width and height without keeping the same aspect ratio. So I'm going to change both of these to 400 to match the size of my model. I can then centre the base in my model. If I move to a 3D view, I can see my block of raw material and I can see the relief that I'm creating. At the moment the base is very thin, so I'm going to change the Z range to 15mm. This creates a nice solid base for my crib board. I'm just going to change the relief to an add and press paste. Now I can build upon this within my 2D view. Next I'm going to create the crib board's scoring track. If I just close the library down here. To do this I'm going to use a, a couple of guide circles of diameter 330 and 350 millimeters. Next I'm going to create the geometry of the hole for the matchstick or counter to fit into and I'm going to make this 3 millimeters. Next I'm going to select this tool which is called pastes along a curve. What this is going to do is copy the circle along the guide track. So if I have my hole selected and hold shift and select both of these guide tracks and set the number of copies I want to make, which in this case is 160, and then press paste. This copies the circles along the guide tracks. These circles at the moment are grouped, so I'm just going to click this button to ungroup them. This allows me to edit each circle individually. What I'm going to do next is delete every sixth hole from the pattern. This is not necessary, but is common on many crib boards and allows the counting of points to be a bit easier. So I'm going to do this all the way around my guide tracks. These guide tracks don't need to be circular, but can be any shape you want. Using this Create a Polyline tool, you can create virtually any shape track you'd like. Once I've completed that, I can zoom out and just check I have the right number of holes. For a complete crib track, I need 120 holes for each player. I actually have too many holes here, which is fine. I can just delete the extra holes, which makes space for the start and the end of the track. I'm also going to move one of these circles to make the winning hole at the end of the track. I'm also going to leave a few in the middle for extra pegs. Once I'm happy with the track, I can click and hold the left mouse button and drag the cursor over all of the holes. I can then group all of these holes together, which is useful for later on. Next I'm going to make the track outlines. I'm going to do this by using the offset vector tool and selecting my out, outer vector. I'm then going to offset this 10mm inwards until I have a track outline that I'm happy with. Once I have these I'm going to cut out the areas that aren't part of the track. I'm going to do this using the node editor and then by hovering over the line and pressing the C button to cut the vector. 
Once I do this at both ends, I can select the inside line and delete it. Once I've completed this, I'm going to select all three lines and use the Offset Vector tool again. The reason for doing this is so I can use a V-carve later on. So this time within the Offset Vector tool, I'm going to offset to both sides by a distance of 0.5mm. I'm then going to delete the interior vectors. Once I'm happy with this, again I can select all of these vectors and group them together. Next I'm going to break the track up into sections. I'm going to do this using the Create a Polyline tool. Using this tool I'm just going to draw a line between the sections. And then again I'm going to offset this by 0.5mm on both sides. And delete the inner vector. Now that I have this vector, I can use the Transform tool to move it into position. And then I can change the origin position to the centre of the model by dragging the blue dot down and specifying the coordinates. This then allows me to drag the vector around the model to each intersect. And by holding control as I do it, the vector is copied each time. Once I've done this for all the intersects, including the start and end points, I can select all of these vectors and deselecting the ones I've already grouped means that I can group just the intersection vectors together. Now that I've done this, my crib track is complete. Next I'm going to add some decorations and personalise my crib board. There are plenty of decorations to use already within the clip art library. So I'm just going to look at a few of them here. And if I go to objects, I could add any of these to my crib board, but I'm going to select the cards. If I move this clip art into my model, I can resize it and clicking on the 3D view. I can change the Z range. I'm going to make my Z range 10 millimeters so that it stands out from the crib board. But I have to remember to ensure that it's still within the material block. This gives me a visual representation of what the relief will look like. Next I can move in back into the 2D view and I can personalize my crib board even further by using text. So when I click on the text tool here it opens up this sidebar which contains different fonts and sizes etc. There are many fonts to choose from including ones that are already saved on your computer. Once you've selected one click anywhere and start typing. I'm just going to move this to see how it looks and I don't really like the B's on that writing so I'm just going to highlight that again and just change to a different font. I'm also going to increase the size a little bit. Once I'm satisfied I can press done and the text is generated. Now I don't want my text right in the centre of my model so I'm just going to use this offset vector tool again that we used before. I'm going to offset my outside vector by 50 millimeters, and this is going to become my guide curve for my text. Now if I click and hold the text button this second option appears which is called text on a curve. And With this tool I can select my text and select my guide curve and press this select button. I can then click and drag my text around to where I'd like it and press OK. I can add some more text if I want, maybe something like your name or something to make it personal. And again, you can wrap this to the same curve. This time you can change the text position so that the text is on the other side and that the text is placed below the line. Again, you can drag this round to where you'd like it and once you're happy you can press OK. I'm also just going to add a little bit more text 
just to show the start and finish position of the board. Once I'm happy with that, and I think my design is complete, I can move into the 3D view and I can start generating the toolpaths that are going to be used by the CNC machine. To do this I click on toolpaths and firstly I'm going to do my outline so I'm going to select the profile tool. Once I've selected my outline vector and make sure the toolpath is going to be outside that selected vector I need to choose my profiling tool. For this I'm just going to use a 12mm end mill. But you can choose any tools you have available to you. My next toolpath I want to make is going to be an area clearance and I want to clear away all the material down to the surface of the crib board excluding the material that's going to make up the cards. So here I'm going to select the outside vector and the card vector and this means that only the material in between these vectors will be machined. I'm going to leave my start depth for zero because I'm working from the top of my material and I want my finish depth to be 10 millimeters, which is where I want the surface of my base to be. Like before I need to select a tool and I can change other parameters such as the spindle speed and the feed rate and I can also change the tool clearance strategy which I'm going to change to offset. Once you're happy you can give it a name and click the button at the bottom which calculates the toolpath. Here you can see the toolpaths highlighted but if you want to hide them you can click these light bulbs and they will disappear. My next toolpath is going to machine the profile of the cards. So for this I want a 3D toolpath. With the card vector selected I can choose to machine just inside this area. For 3D toolpaths you can select a roughing tool and a, diff and a separate finishing tool. Since this is a slightly more complex toolpath, it may take a tiny bit longer to calculate. But once it's complete, you can see that the toolpath is very detailed. At this point, I may want to check that my toolpaths are correct so far. So I can do this by right-clicking on toolpaths and selecting Simulate All Toolpaths. This runs a simulation of the toolpaths you've already created. Within the simulation you can also change the material of the graphic. I think I'll stick with medium oak. Now if we reselect the vectors we can continue making our toolpaths. And the next one I want to do is another 3D toolpath to create the base. So with the outside and cards vectors selected, again I'm just going to machine within this area. And again I can choose my tools for roughing and finishing and click calculate. Again I can hide this by using these light bulbs and I can also reset the simulation to give me my raw block of wood again. My next toolpath is going to be for the outlines of the track. For this I just want to carve using a V-bit tool, which I can do by clicking this icon here. For this toolpath you need to specify a start depth, and for this model this will be 10mm, which is where the surface of the base is. Next a tool needs to be selected, and for this this needs to be a V-bit carving tool, so I'm just going to use the smallest one. Once this is done you can calculate this toolpath. The same type of toolpath can be selected for the rest of the track and also for the writing. My final toolpath is going to be for the holes and for this I'm going to use a drilling toolpath. Within this toolpath I need to specify a start depth and a finish depth. So I'll make this 10 and a finish depth of 20 and then select an appropriate tool. Now that all the toolpaths have been calculated, I can hide my vectors and I can run the simulation of all the toolpaths.
Once the simulation is complete, we can see our completed crib board. We can just inspect the detail to make sure it's all correct. The waste material can be deleted by selecting this button within the simulation. And there we have our completed crib board. The only thing that remains to do now is to export the toolpaths. To do this I'm going to click on toolpaths and then click this save toolpaths option. So now I can see all my toolpaths to be saved. In order to convert these toolpaths from ArtCam into a format that your machine will understand, we need to click here into the machine file format option. And this brings down a drop down menu of many different machine formats. It's very likely that your machine format will be included in here somewhere. If you're unsure you can download the trial version and check with one of the tutorials. I'm just going to choose a generic G-code format. I'm then going to save my toolpaths to separate files and I'm going to append toolpath details to file names. This just includes these details within the file name so I know which one's which. By clicking here I can select a location to save and type in a file name. And then once that's complete, I can click save. The toolpaths are now saved, and I'm ready to machine my cribboard. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy designing your very own cribboard.